happen. <laughs> the first question I see you make me laugh. After all this time, how many times a month do you make love? What's up guys? Welcome back to this fabulous YouTube channel. Surprisingly, you guys enjoyed asking those questions. Surprisingly, we asked giving the bad advice. And surprisingly, we're here doing a part two. So with that being said, start the montage. No, I don't know. No. Just go through. I, I honestly haven't looked at the questions, guys. Um, he but hasn't. I'm excited to answer. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed the part one. If you guys haven't seen part one of, of relationship advice questions or uh, was it life advice, uh, go ahead and check it out. Um, I'm pretty sure you guys seen me clipping the hell out of that. So, yeah, you guys uh, asked some questions last week. We didn't get a chance to respond to all of them, so we're gonna go ahead and respond to them and you know react to them. So. That's what we're doing on this beautiful Friday. And we also have a different setup. And I'm sitting up, so I feel comfortable. All right. Uh, ba, 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 da, ba. All right, so question number one, guys. Let's go ahead and start this thing real quick. And I have some uh, questions as well that someone sent that I thought was kind of funny, so. Oh my God, so there's a lot more because last time we filmed, we literally like filmed right after we asked. So we only, like, there was, you know, there was definitely responses, but there's a lot more. So we're not we're not gonna get to all of them even in this video. So maybe it'll be a maybe it'll be an ongoing thing. Let us know, guys. Yeah. Okay. Love you. Love that question. <laughs> okay. He likes me, but it's uh, going slow. What should I do? He likes you, but it's going slow. I think there's a conversation to be had. I think that um, you might have to tell him what your expectations are because. Uncommunicated expectations are the worst relationship killers. So, ooh, that's a good one. I feel like you guys have to talk and discuss. uncommunicated expectations are the worst relationship killers. That's a good one. Where'd you get that? <laughs> <laughs> I think you guys should definitely you should talk to him about it if you're serious about it. And if you're afraid of what he's gonna say, then you know those are chances you're gonna have to take. But I feel like, yeah, talk, communicate and just say, hey man, like uh, I'm willing to go at your pace, but I have to understand where we're going because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if you guys have the the, the same plan, the same uh, idea. So that's my take. Yeah, <clears throat> I like that. I just think you said it the best way you could say it. I mean, truly, I just feel like we get so wrapped up in like this idea of like what's gonna happen if we just tell people what we want and like we're scared of losing something because but really fucking lose it then you know what i mean because it's if if that person can't actually ultimately give you what you want and need then you're doing yourself a disservice by being afraid of asking because ultimately it's not going to make you happy and that's really just coming back to like you don't feel maybe like you're worthy or something of what you do want. Yeah. And if you're um, afraid to lose a person, then you're just not ready. Yeah, because ultimately if that person is about you, they're gonna be about you. Yeah, they're gonna change. And um, story time, Carlos did that with me. He made, he, he, told, he told me what's up. <laughs> he, told, he told me what's up. I need that stool. Like, For the coffee? Yeah, that'd be nice. <laughs> it's so big. Cool, so now, Question number two. Okay. What's with ghosting? Everything's going fine and then he just ghosts me. You know, I'm so glad that um, I missed that part of Dating, the dating life. Like I feel like that's a you did I, I miss that. You ghosted people. No, but people nowadays ghost because they <laughs> want to tell have a story. Almost how I would go on dates just to have a story. I feel like now people ghost to tell people that they ghosted. You know, like I feel like a lot of times, I feel like that's like a, what is it, a Gen Z thing? Is it? I'm not, I don't I know. Think, I'm I don't not know. Gen Z. I don't know, but I think that uh, maybe but ghosting. I think if someone's gonna ghost you, it's automatic. Just take the L. Uh, don't ask them why. Don't be like, why are you ghosting me? Don't do that. That's, that's but it. I guess the question is, if everything is going fine, why would they just ghost you? I guess the, the answer saying, is, they're they're everything saying. wasn't going yeah. fine. And, and it doesn't have to do with you. And, don't, like, and if you he comes I mean? back once in a while or whatever, then it's not worth it. Like, you don't want that type of relationship. Yeah, assuming you don't want a, something like that. But yeah, I don't know what's going on, but I feel like uh, it depends on what... 
I mean, it, it also depends. When, okay, what about like when you've ghosted someone? Because you've done that, right? Yeah, because I'm, I'm not interested in them. So it's just kind of really like, or I just, I'm interested in them late nights, two o'clock. So like, right? it's like, like, it's like, I want to use this person for what I need out of them, but I don't want to put effort. Effort into it, yeah. So it's and like, usually, yeah, or, it's plain, and right. then maybe what happens is you might meet somebody that does spark more of an interest and then you kind of naturally ghost them. the other person because you don't need that from them at the moment. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I think what's what that is is like somebody not wanting to just say to you, "Hey, I'm not that interested," um, or, or, or I have something going on in my life, and therefore I can't really pursue anything right now. Like they're not ready. It's kind of like a I don't know. What do you think about ghosting? I think it's such a cowardly, it is a super, it's a stupid psycho. thing. Like you could, it doesn't have to be a long drawn out thing. You could just tell somebody, "Hey, I'm hey, not, I, I, at this, this point, I can't pursue this, and this is why." It well, some people like to chase. I think some people like to, to feel like that, like, oh, this girl's coming after me, this guy's coming after me to feel something good about themselves. And I feel like that, a lot of times, that's what it is more of like, oh, I feel like, I feel wanted. So, yeah. you know, if you have time, then, I don't know, I, I suggest you, if someone's ghosting you, I just be like, all right, peace out, I'll ghost you harder. Ghost harder, guys. Hashtag ghost harder. Ghost them. Be like, nah, bro. Don't even give them a time <laughs> nah, of day. Bro. Just ghost them. Like, just block them. That's it. And then you don't ever out of sight, out of mind. So, you know, your mind is stronger than what you think. And these people, you could survive without them. What about the pull and push type woman? Should I leave her or keep playing that game? The pull and push? I think the girl who kind of leads you on and then leaves you behind. Um, and then like leaves you hanging like, yeah, oh, I, I want think, you, but no, give me space. And girls, uh, girls that could do that a lot easier than guys. But, really? Yeah, because guys are simps. I think guys, a lot of times, especially if the girl's hot, you're probably going to be like, well, I got to just like, ah, oh, gosh, she's so hot. I guess I got to go. I guess I just have to deal with her antics. Yeah, for, people deal with crazy girls all the time. But I feel like um, it depends on, if you're going to play the game, play the game. Don't think this is white material. That's what I think. Yeah. Like, if, if it's a pull and pull, then pull and pull. And then you do the same thing. But don't, I mean, you know, don't put your eggs in that basket. Like I always say, like, I don't think you have to be serious about her if she's not serious about you. And then if it ever gets to the point where you guys both, and you feel like you guys are sharing the same interests in terms of what you guys want for one another, uh, and give to one another, then go for it. But pull and pull, go ahead and pull and pull. Yeah, I think it's just a sign of emotional immaturity. And uh, and maybe a little bit of a lack of interest. They might be using you to fulfill some like attention that they need in the moment or whatever. But if someone is emotionally mature and really is interested in you, I don't think they're gonna behave that way. Yeah. Um, and if you want to be that, then go ahead and do that with her. But yeah. I no pushing. Yeah, if you don't want something serious, then maybe just don't take it seriously. Yeah, exactly. You know exactly. what I mean? Like, just enjoy when she's pulling <laughs> yeah, when, and go find someone else to enjoy <laughs> when she's pushing. So. But yeah, don't, don't, you know. And not all relationships have, have, not all relationships have to be super serious. A serious relationship. So, you know, like, Sometimes it's all it's good. like, just it's have fun. Work. This is a good one. How to be confident on the first date with a girl that probably has many guys trying. So oh, just, okay, first of all, you have to believe that a lot of girls want you too, my man. Like, mm. dude, just because a girl has a lot of guys trying doesn't mean that you don't have value. You know what I mean? Like, you have to believe that you have value and there are a lot of women that want to be with you. You know what I How mean? How do you know because that there's a lot of guys trying too? I think people make an assumption because especially if a girl has a lot going for her, the truth of the matter is probably a lot of guys are trying. Do you know what I mean? That doesn't mean that she gives people the time of day. If she's even willing to go on a, out on a date with you, yeah. unless she's a really terrible human being that just wants to use you for something, like, which they're out there. Mm -hmm. But, um, then you know that means that she's interested in something about you, right? Like, so don't take that lightly. Like, have some confidence that you also have something to bring to the table. And if you're feeling like you're not good enough for somebody, then I think work on that first. Do you know what I mean? Because like, why? Why? Why would you not be of equal value to that girl that you're thinking has a lot of guys going after her? 
And if you do believe that, then why are you even worried about feeling confident in the first place? Yeah, and don't try. I feel like when you try, I think if you try to Just like al alpha someone or like try to like, yeah, you have to be yourself in those situations. Because I think girls are really, they'll see through that. And, um, and I think at the end of the day, if you're, <clears throat> if you try to be something you're not and then you don't get what you want, you're going to question, like, you're going to be like, man, I should have just been myself. Um, at the end of the day, it probably would have worked out better. So I feel like, you know, don't try, don't put, don't do something, don't act the way that you're not normally. And I think it'll be fine. And if she doesn't like you, then forget about it. But I mean, I think it's like when we're show younger, her your bank account, take her to like, like, dinner. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's like something like when we're younger, we take these things so seriously. Mm -hmm. Like the idea of being rejected. Bro, I or... picked this girl up in a Prius. Lifestyles. As a matter of fact, this is a brand new one from yesterday. Ew. <laughs> don't sleep on the Prius. The man. Gets... I know what that feels like, so I don't want to like lessen yeah. that feeling. And especially when you really like, you're feeling like you really want to find your life partner. Maybe you're getting a little bit older, and you're like, I really want to have a family, or I really want, or I just want that life partner that I see other people have. And it's like almost you start to get this like desperation yeah. type thing. I don't know where I'm going with this. I'm rambling. Never mind. Guys, I'm just honestly, saying not everything is so serious. Yeah. Like one always, always, if you need to take time to work on yourself so that you feel like you have value worthy, yeah. and worthy, then do that <laughs> before you start dating. And then otherwise just don't take it so seriously because it's like not the end of the world if something doesn't work out with one person. Cause no matter how beautiful and funny and smart and successful and kind and loving or whatever the girl is, there's another girl that yeah, has all listen, those qualities. Yeah, listen, if it does work out with you like trying to impress her all the time, then it's gonna get exhausting. And it's just gonna be hard for you because you're like, damn, I put the stakes so high or something I'm not. And yeah, I'm not Carlos so picked just, me just, up in a Prius, not that I, I ever cared. I had a flat tire, bro, I had a flat and, tire. And, I literally and, had a flat. I was like, bro, after this date, my tire might be flat. And I was like, whatever, <laughs> fuck, triple A. No, but look, 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 how do you know how Wait, serious a guy <laughs> is when they only want to text these days and not call? Bro, that, that I love that question because I, 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 you know, calling is so much better than texting. I don't know how people build relationships via text or like, you know, even FaceTime. I feel like that it's so crazy to me. But I feel like... Why FaceTime? FaceTime is so weird, bro. Because you have to feel like you're a little more on. No, because FaceTime is just, it's a weird concept for me. I like, hate every FaceTime. Every time someone FaceTime me. I FaceTimed was dating me, someone I, before yeah. that always wanted to FaceTime me and I was just like, bro, this is so annoying. No, I, I, me too. Like I, there was, there were some girls that would FaceTime me all the time that I lost out of my roster because they were <laughs> trying to FaceTime me all the time. All the time, and I'm like, bro, I don't want to face. I lost like, out of my roster. I'll go. I was like, I'll go wherever. But like, I, I'll take a drive. You know, like it's all good. Like, you know, we don't have to FaceTime. And they're like, let's just face. I'm like, dude. And it, it's for me. I'm paranoid. So I'm like, you're probably you're probably married. You probably have a boyfriend. Um. Wait, if they want to FaceTime. Yeah, for me, it, like I was. That's I, so. That's so I weird. That's like there. the opposite, right? I like, wish you to go there. They're probably gonna FaceTime because they always want to do it at nighttime too. I'm like, bro. First off, I'm not trying to FaceTime anyone at night. Second off of all, like, I don't, like, why? Why at nighttime? Okay, you need to go to therapy and figure out your shit because that's the weirdest I just, take I just didn't, on I, that. I just, didn't, I just FaceTime. hate FaceTime. So I just don't like FaceTime because, honestly, like, I do feel like I have to be a little more on. And when you're just talking to someone where you don't have to see their face, sometimes I feel like you can be almost a little more vulnerable. Or at least for me, maybe that's my own issue. But like, I'm not thinking about what does my hair look like or what is whatever. And I could just talk to you. I could just like be myself. Phone? Yeah. Yeah. Like we, we easy, like Carlos easy, and I easy, would talk easy. to each other on the phone. Yeah. What was the question? <laughs> what was the question? Like, oh, how do you know if they're serious about it? How do you know if a guy's serious? No, dude, but that's the thing is like this generation, like it's the, different. It's different. You know what I mean? So I just feel like you can't really base it on that. I would say. How often does he reach out to you? Does he make effort in seeing you in person? That's what, that's the key. If you have to be like a scheduled one-on-one -on -one in a personal. Carlos meeting, literally like 100%. lived an hour away from me and every single day since the day we met, he was, he came to see me. Every single day since the day we met. 
And this guy was relentless. In my Prius. In his if Prius. I had, if I had any other car, I wouldn't he, go to the gas Every mileage. day he made that effort. He drove an hour. And then he, he would, a lot of times he would stay with me because for me, like, I, you know, he's always had non-traditional jobs. He worked for himself. I, at the, at the time I had, you know, a, a corporate job and I, you know, wasn't going to trans, uh, or what is it? Transfer. Not transfer. Transfer, bus, transfer buses. <laughs> I'm going to transfer buses. <laughs> I don't want to commute all the way from two hours away, yeah, like because yeah, in yeah. traffic it's two hours. Wow! So he would drive an hour to come see me at night. He would stay the night and then drive back to his own place in the morning. And you, so you did that every day until eventually we lived together. I mean, sometimes I would obviously go see him, especially on the weekends and stuff. It's not like I wasn't putting effort, but I mean, this was the man. The man put the effort. Do you know what I'm seeing? <laughs> I'm sure that was motivating. No, but for sure, I think I think you have to have some type Wait, of like. Some guys, even if they love sex, will not make that effort. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Guys. Why do men think five minutes into a date that they will be able to smash at some point? Wait, what? Why do guys? Is that a think guy or a that's girl? a girl? That's a girl. Yeah. Why do guys five minutes into a date? I think because. Probably. Maybe you're lead, leading them on, girl. Oh, is that her experience? Like they just they just think they can. Maybe they want smash. to smash. Her. <laughs> I don't think what they want at the end of the day. Yeah, like who cares what they, they think? Matter. The like, point is, is that you can I say guess, no. But if, if they're too aggressive, you know, call nine one one. But is it really five minutes into a date? Like, are you being I think like you're being a facetious? Troll. Like you're. That was. I just wanted to throw that out. This was an inner. This we might not use this. Is any tips for building a business while keeping a healthy relationship? Have balance. You have to have balance. Um, I think that's key, dude. Balance is key because at the end of the day, if you're going to be in a relationship while building a business, <clears throat> you still have to prioritize someone else's emotions and feelings. That's why a lot of people, when they start a business, they're single. I was, and it worked out great. <laughs> but I feel like once you start getting in this relationship and you have someone to take, like have someone else that you have to acknowledge and you have to have a, a good work-life balance. It's, my kind of question is like, what stage of the relationship? Because- Yeah, we need context. In, you guys have to add context. Yeah, like, hi, like, my name is Jared, I'm 25 it, I years know old. it's hard in that little thing, in that little box to add context, but um, because if you're just, if you're like, just in a new relationship, it's a little different. If you guys have been together for a while, it's a little different. Like, you know, you and I, in a little bit into the relationship, it was like, let's work together on this thing in terms of like, let's support each other. So you kind of have to be with someone. I think that's going to be understanding mm -hmm. too. And like, don't completely neglect the person, but hopefully you're with somebody who Understands. also supports yeah. you you know what i mean and, and supports you in the sense that this is your passion this is something that means a lot to you and that is going to take a lot of your time and they have to be kind of okay with that i think yeah i think you have to communicate with them a lot too because yeah that i, lot, I love you that yeah. you know i'm not going to be able to do a b and c perhaps like whatever but you know let's do this some compromise but ultimately i think you need to Consider the person and, and do your best to have balance. But yeah. it, when you're really building a new business, I mean, a lot of your energy and focus has to be towards that. And I just think no, you I, need it, to be with a partner that's understanding, yeah. honestly. But, you, but also, you have to understand that you have to, you're have you playing a part in a relationship, too. It can be one way. Like, that's very selfish. Like, I feel like that's part, like, if, if you feel like you don't have enough bandwidth for someone and just, you know, I don't know, it's hard. But I feel like if, if it's a new relationship, maybe just reconsider being in a relationship. If it's an old relationship, then yeah, you have to highly communicate with someone. And you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to, you have to like give some time to your partner 100%. So work, I know that work sometimes seems like you have to be on 24 hours a day, 24 seven, but in reality, there could be something that you could do for your partner that, you know, shows I think, yeah, I think and, like and you guys should have check-ins with each other. Yeah. Like check-in in terms of like, how are you doing? How are you feeling? Is there something 
that you feel like and you're take the meeting. day off. Take the day off. Like take the day off with your partner. I feel like a lot of times people will think like they have this misconception of like being an entrepreneur or whatever working so much as like a healthy thing or a good thing. Honestly, it could drive me crazy. So like, I feel like you should take a couple days off and like. Yeah, with I your think, partner, I you know, think, like just yeah. have a good balance, have a good relationship with your work, and have a good relationship with your with your significant other. You know, they're both as equally as important. So, yeah, it depends on the business, though, right? Like, think about let's say I opened up a coffee shop or something, and like, yeah, but you I still have, have hours. You still have coffee. You, you every every business has an at working hours. You know, like a lot of times. Yeah. You know. I feel like, yeah. I yeah, I mean, I think you can always make time. I think the important thing is like, make sure the communication is solid um, and check in with each other. And, and that's it. Is true love really 50% your brain and 50% your heart? Like, is it? Yeah. Wait, like, yeah, what does that so. mean? <laughs> like logic versus your, your gut or yeah. something? Yeah, 100%. Your heart. I would say yes, because here's why. Because obviously your heart's gonna be in it because you love the person and your mind is gonna be a wild card. Like I feel like sometimes your mind could take you to crazy places and you might think about certain things or um, feel certain ways that your mind is allowing you to, to, to think about. And I feel like at the end of the day, whatever you feel in your heart and your gut is gonna kind of navigate you back to like the, the path of like, it's all good. That's just my mind working, doing what it does to allow me to uh, recognize and, and, and remember how much I love this person. So I feel like it is 50-50 and I think that that's a wonderful question and I like how you broke that down. Um, because yeah, I feel like sometimes we listen, we tend to listen too much to our minds and sometimes that could just take us to a place where we don't want to be. And you have to listen to your gut, because like your gut is always going to be instinctually right. And you know, if um, your gut's telling you one thing, prioritize your gut. But your heart never lies either. I'm dating a married girl, mm. and then every time we have sex, she ignores me for two to three weeks, but then she gets normal again. Why? Honey, I think that she honey. loves you a lot, and she's trying to give you space. You're so, stop it, stop it. Bro, she's married. <laughs> like, hey. Listen, she happens. probably feels There's guilty no such, the, and shame. She's probably feeling a lot of emotions and just, and doesn't know how to deal no, with it. No, she's probably busy with her husband doing things that married couples do. I feel like if you're dealing with a married woman, I've been in this position. <laughs> Always Carlos with story time. <laughs> This was a long, long time ago. I was so young. I was very young. Um, but listen, man, I'd get out of the situation. It's always scary. You don't know what a, you never know what a husband's capable of doing. You never know. You know, like there's a difference between like, you know, a, 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 a angry husband that got finds out that his wife's cheating on him because you know he's probably working hard and taking care of the family. You know, I don't know what the hell his. I don't know what the. How, how they're living their life. But at the end of the day, I feel like it's, it's, if she's ignoring you, bro, she's busy. You don't have to ask why. And if you're, if you, and if you're happy tapping a, a, a married woman, then just be happy that you're doing it at least once a month and you're chill. Don't think too much about it. Like have fun, you have a fun story, and be careful because like I said, you never know what this guy or her husband could be capable of doing. You get crazy, bro. Imagine someone messing with your girl. I feel like that's when... Well, someone is messing with his girl. It's literally the husband. That's what I'm saying. And, okay. the husband, and if the husband finds out that he's messing with her, then he's probably going to be like, bro, I'm going to... And a lot of guys don't blame the women. They blame the other guy, which is ridiculous. I feel like, yeah. you know, uh, just be careful, bro. Be careful. And these guys are crazy. I've had friends, too, who, like, had partners, girlfriends who were in relationships with other men. And those guys were super possessive and crazy. And they're like... It's kind of dangerous. Yeah, this is like another one where it's like, we need context. Like, yeah. what's going on? Why is she dating you if she's married? 
And is she dating you or are you just hooking up? Because there's a, I, you know, is she just coming over and knock knock and be like, yo, let's get the deed done? Or, I mean, you guys are. Yeah, like, are you guys having like dates. a love relationship yeah. or is it just about sex? Because it seems like if she's ghosting you, she might be busy. Bro. She, she might, might, yeah, just, she might be busy in her relationship with yeah, her husband. She might be trying to build or, a like, as a woman, I, I, I like, I can only speak from my perspective, right? Like, every, anything that we're saying, we're speaking from our own, like, life perspective, yeah. right? Like, so it's gonna be a little biased in that way, but. For me, if that was if I was doing that, I can imagine the shame spiral that I'd be going through. She's she probably doesn't because she's already having. If it, it, it seems no, like no, no, no. I'm saying like, let's say I'm in a loveless marriage. It doesn't oh, matter. Yeah. Let's just say I'm in a loveless marriage. If I don't know, maybe like whatever. I like I I know that I'm not really happy, but maybe for whatever circumstance, I can't. It's not so. It's not such an easy choice for me to leave. Maybe I can't. Maybe it's not a feasible thing. Maybe you know, there's some other circumstance, right? Like, like money or something. There's something going on that I can't leave, but I know I'm not in love. Just still the act of being like deceitful, lying, going behind someone's back. The fact that I could get caught doing it, like this, this shame spiral that I think I'd be going on would be so intense that I think it kind of makes sense that she kind of disappears like yeah. for a little bit because it's like dude like and then she probably gets to a point where damn i'm lonely like i feel i just i don't know you know what i mean i could i could imagine that scenario in my head you know yeah, that's crazy that's a crazy um, woman's perspective i don't for know me, i think she's just kind i of really would love it you guys write in and just give us more perspective on that this one like what is actually going on here but yeah man just have fun <laughs> That's always at the end of the day. That's always the advice. <laughs> Bro, just have always, fun. As a guy, you gave a woman's perspective. As a guy, as a guy in that thing, just be careful. As because, yeah, you, as a dude, you have to be careful. Because like I said, you never know what other how crazy the other guy is. As um, anybody, like yeah, you, it's, it's almost like getting into a street fight. You know, like you never know what someone else is gonna bring out. You know, so you have to kind of know your role. Oh my god, this one is so easy. Have you felt like you were also attracted to someone else? No, I don't have eyes for anyone. Yeah, of course, of course, people, dude. I <laughs> like, of course, you're gonna be attracted to other people. You have to. The, it's so unrealistic to say yeah. that you're never gonna be attracted to other people. Yeah, it, it gets on my nervous when I I see guys running relationships and they, they don't even look at other women that are like beautiful and walking down the street. And, uh, you're in the no, car. No, be respectful. No, 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 no. As a guy, like, okay, me and my me and a gentleman are in the car, right? And we're just hanging out. We're driving. We see you a and girl, a gentleman. And we're yeah. like. Damn. Oh, she's beautiful. And then he, or or you're like, what the fuck, dude? You know, you don't cat call. You're just talking to your boy. And you're like, damn, what the fudge? What the fudge? And then the guy just like, I'm no, married. no, I'm here. Crazy? Like, yeah. Are you crazy? And you're like, bro, what are you doing? I mean, those guys are red flags. Those guys are the ones you have to be careful about because those are the ones who are like, if I, if I touch that look, subject, I'm gonna go. I might I'm gonna have go. to go do go something. All the way. You know? So yeah. I feel like I just feel like. Okay, so but I'll give you my perspective, and I know that not all women are like this. Like, yeah, I can, I can um, see someone I do like, but not sexually attracted to. No, like I mean, I can see somebody, and I'm like, oh, they're really attractive. Like that man is really attractive. But it, but as a like for me, not I'm not even gonna say as a woman, but for me, it's like I don't think about, ooh, I wanna. Him. Like you know what I mean? Like I don't think like that. Like in the same way, I think kind of guys, guys do. Yeah. Like, That's all guys think about when they see a girl. He's just like, like, oh, oh my oh. word. What? <laughs> no, I, I don't do that. Like, it's really hard for me to even like sexualize people when I am in a relationship just because I feel like I'm really like, I don't know, tunnel vision on the person I'm with. But, yeah. but that doesn't mean I don't find people attractive. Okay, do you stay if someone cheated and realized their mistake or is it healthy to stay in, and move on? Well, well, you have to answer that for yourself. Did we answer this one? Um, I think that you have to answer that for yourself because I know of situations where a, that there was infidelity in, a, in the relationship with that couple and they were able to work their stuff out and stay together and they're in a healthy relationship to this day. I know for me and my personal boundaries and my personal kind of trust things that if, you know, if Carlos cheated, I, I don't know that I'd be able to move past it or not. You know what I mean? So just so you know. No, 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 I feel like, no, for me too, like, I feel like, um, 
Yeah, I feel like it depends on your relationship, but it depends on your your <coughs> capacity to forgive. If, it depends, and, and also you have to think long term too. Like, are you gonna like hold that against the person? Yeah, like if you are gonna stay, don't yeah. be you resentful. Be yeah, like you have to, you have to be willing to forgive that person and not be like ruminating about something. And it might take time, but like, don't punish that person forever. If they realize their mistake and they're putting the effort to repair their relationship with you and they're doing their best, do not punish that person for the rest of their life. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because it's not fair. Yeah, if they're honest and you could tell that they're honest, because at the end of the day, I feel like that brings a big, like, you know, if the person's honest and you could tell like, okay, they're very sorry about it, they're admitted to everything and they want to work things out, maybe if you could do it. But I think uh, in my, as a, in a, as a guy's perspective, it'd be kind of hard because you're always kind of like, you know, you don't want to think like that, like, damn, some girl, some guy just smashed my girl. So if I feel like I wouldn't let that, I wouldn't be able to let that go for sure. Or I would just use that excuse to act up. So I just feel like, you know, for a guy, it'd be, it's a little bit harder than, than girls. I think girls are more compassionate. You think it's harder for a guy to get past it? Yeah. Oh, it's so interesting. I mean, I don't know. You guys let me know in the comments. Is it harder to get past the girl? Like, I think it'd be, I I think think, it'd be always like in the I back of your mind. I do think in our society, I think women have been conditioned to believe that it's like men are just going to do stuff like that because you're like biologically wired to do stuff like that. But I just think that's such a cop out. But yeah, I think maybe in that way, there's a lot of women that will look past it because they've They're been women. socially conditioned yeah. to believe that that's just... A reality and there's a lot of girls that, that's a lot of girls nowadays are pushing that agenda too they're like i don't care what you do put money on the table let me fucking get dolled up and you could go do whatever you want and yeah if that works for them it sounds what do you guys do for anniversaries nothing nothing <laughs> <laughs> anniversaries are for guys who cheat. <laughs> no, anniversaries for me have always Everything been Everything like, goes, any like, no, no, of romance, you're like, no, that's for people who no, cheat. No, 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 no. Celebrating one day specifically that I could give to you is, is kind of like, I feel like that's dumb. Like, it's like, oh, let me be super nicer. Let me take her to dinner today. I feel like it should be special all the time. Do you make it special for me all the time? Yeah, you went to go get tacos yesterday. Thank you, man. You're so <laughs> yeah, sweet. But I feel like, I feel like, yeah, I think sometimes... We actually just don't know when our anniversary is, yeah. to be honest, guys. Like, we don't know, it's... like, when we made it official. Like, I feel like I don't have a date in my head. We have, like, a general idea, like, the month. But, like, we don't, there's not, like, a date. So, like, we don't really have a time to celebrate. I am more, I actually, like, never have been into anniversaries, really. But I think, like, in general... We just kind of are a little bit non-traditional yeah, in that way. Yeah, 100%. Um, but I, yeah, I totally agree with what you're saying. Is like we should include romance in our life, um, you know, frequently and not just reserve it for one day. But I love celebrating stuff. Yeah, you do. When I think right. about it, like I love celebrating people. Like, like he, we, we talk about this with birthdays. He doesn't really like them. Like he doesn't, he, it always for him, holidays, birthdays, it always goes back to why am I celebrating this thing on one day? And I don't look at it like that. It's not about like that you ignore people the rest of the year. It's mm -hmm. about, this is like something specifically that we're getting together and we're honoring in a like, in a, in a like focused way yeah. for this moment. And it can be fun. And it's like, why do we have to talk about- I think for me, it's a, it's a sheet mentality. Why, like am to go go to, why am I gonna go to yeah with Valentine's Day to dinner when it's fully packed with, with yeah, I don't people like that either. all trying to impress their girls? I don't want to do that. You know, so no, it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I feel like just the energy. Yeah, it's like it's like not too, being. Uh, yeah, I get that because I'm know? the same way. Like both me and you are the black sheep. Yeah, I we're black like sheep. That's, that's what it is. I'm like, bro, I don't want to be in this situation where everyone. I think is what like, it is is like you don't want to feel forced to do something. Yeah, no, for sure. I, I just think it's fun. Like there are just things that are fun to do. It's it doesn't have to be some I, yeah. big I, agenda. Like, I, I would celebrate Valentine's Day maybe at the end of February. <laughs> yeah, like for, I, I, to me, I think that's what it is. I just don't want to be. I, I, I don't want to like, follow. I don't want to go and I don't want to like 
fall into the traps of the matrix. Do you know what it is? I think probably for me too is for me like going back to childhood. My mom always made a really like yeah. big deal around holidays and birthdays, so I think that's why it's special to me. Yeah, for sure. But with that being said, I never saw my parents celebrate anniversaries, so maybe that's why I don't care. Like I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what it is. My parents always celebrated their anniversaries. <clears throat> um, they're in love with somebody that's not from the same country as them, and their parents are against that. <whistles> that sucks. Okay, go ahead. It's hard to speak about this because, you know, like that, like we've been lucky that that hasn't been our experience. Like our parents haven't, you know, put that type of pressure on us to be with some a certain type of person. Yeah. So I think it's hard because I would, it's like, especially when you love your parents, right? Like you don't want to disappoint them and you also want, it, I'm sure it's important to get their blessing, right? 100%. And, and with some cultures, it's absolutely necessary, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you have to get their blessing, right? So I think it's a really hard situation. Um, but I think the best thing you can do is like how in love. <laughs> Like, is this going to be your person? Are you going to marry this person? Are you going to, you know, this is a person that you want to spend your life with? Um, I think the best thing you can do is set yourself up to be as independent as possible so that if your parents decide not to support you, that you are going to be okay. I think you have to be honest, right? Yeah. Like, if this is really going to be your person, I think you have to be honest and, and, and as hard as it might be, like be, just be willing to accept the consequence that they may not accept it and they may not be supportive and that might damage your relationship with your parents. But sometimes I think that we fear things and we just don't give people enough credit because maybe they have expressed like they're not going to support something like that. But yeah. But maybe when they actually see their child happy and that's doing true. that, that's and it may not be right away, but wants. they might they might change their mind. Now, some people some people are true. just they're really like stubborn and they don't. But I just think like you know that stems from like cultural stuff, maybe trauma, like other stuff, and you have to just decide if you want to break that cycle or not. Like if you love someone, you love them. Yeah. And that's a beautiful thing, you know. To break the curse, yeah, 100%. Maybe that's, any... it's, no, I mean, it's beautiful when you love someone. Like, when you love somebody, that's a beautiful thing. No, also thing. to and break like... the cycle of maybe the parents, you know, of having that mentality as well, that maybe you could be the one who's like... Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, um, it's obviously a cultural thing and, and probably stems from, like, yeah, you know, like yeah, I said, yeah, trauma. Yeah. But, like, but, yeah, that's a hard one, guys. I'm sorry you're going through that. Um, I would say just be honest. And when you're ready to be honest, you know, have yourself... Be in the position where you're going to be okay you know with or without their support all right guys these are going to be two last questions that we have and these are going to be from um this person who has very interesting friends carlos i got two questions for you you're open you're very open-minded so i want to ask from a guy's perspective one before your relationship what was the maximum amount of dates you went on before having sex whether it was casual or a serious relationship. That all depends on <sighs> what is that? It all depends on vibe. I think you know, like I don't know. In, in terms of a guy's perspective, I don't know what kind of perspective I could give. Like because all guys are different. There's some guys who will sleep with anything that walks. There's a couple guys. There's a few guys who have a more like a higher standard. Uh, so I feel like. I don't know, it also depends on a, a, the girl, right? Because at the end of the day, they have to consent to say yes. Um, so I feel like, you know, it's not up to the guy to like be like, oh, I only go on, I no, go on three like, dates and you then could, we have sex. You, you could be like, you could be the type of guy that's like, yeah, three dates, if she's not putting out, I'm done. Yeah, exactly. And I think it all depends on the type of girl that you're going after, you're pursuing. So if, if you think that- And what you're looking for. Like, are you, you just for? looking for a sex relationship? Yeah. Or do you want something more? Because if you want something more, it might be worth waiting. For me, honestly, I was never the type of guy who would go 
on the first date and like sleep with someone. I, I just felt like that was a little bit, I just, it wasn't gross, but I just feel like, you know, I, Oh, you're so sweet. I might have a couple of times. <laughs> no, listen, I feel like, uh, if you're asking my perspective in terms of what I think about that, like, or my, I don't know, I just feel like it was never a thing because I, I feel like you kind of need to have a different, like, more of a connection with someone, especially when you need to get intimate with them. You don't know how someone how clean someone is. I feel like you have to go on a few dates for sure. Like I, I, to me, that all matters. You know, like how clean someone is. No, also I. I mean, like, seriously, there's just some I type do. Of, I like, do get gross. First out. one, like one night stands to me were always like, this feels very dirty. You know, like this just doesn't feel like even when my my friends would do it. You're like, bro, you like it's just something about it. I mean, unless like you are somewhere where the girl is like extremely high like this is the only time I'm ever gonna get a chance to do this. Maybe, but I feel like I for love the that. Most I love part, it. <laughs> for the most Cause yeah, part, most guys don't care at all. No, you have to care guys. And you they raw to. dog it too. Like they just don't oh, no. give a fuck. I have a close guy friend who is a virgin and he's now 41. I have dyslexia. Uh, he used to want to wait for marriage, but now he doesn't and just wants to be laid. If you were him, would you tell the girl you were a virgin, even if it was just a random girl? Laughing out loud, he is so afraid and nervous if he should tell her. Is this a friend or is this you? What? Not you, I'm sad. the person oh, the that girl? asked. No, this really girl is going to ham with questions. <laughs> you oh. don't need to tell anybody. You're 41 years old, no. just have sex. Yeah, as a guy, I feel like, as a gentleman, you don't, you don't have go, to. You don't want to go into the battlefield with the pistol, bro. You want to. You want to make. You want to go with a bazooka. And if you tell a girl that, they might just. I just felt like saying that. I feel like that just sounded cool. <laughs> I just felt like that sounded cool. Don't tell. There's no need. I mean, unless I feel like there's only one way. If you feel like it's important and you want to respect your virginity, if you like, let's say right now you think you don't care, but if you get to that point and you feel like, okay, actually I do care about my virginity. Talk to the person because you also don't want to give it away if it's special to you because obviously you're 41 you still have your v-card so if you don't want to swipe that out <laughs> it's just maybe talk to her but don't feel pressured to do it unless you feel it's right um and if you want to wait till marriage there's nothing wrong with that then go ahead and do that but i feel like if you just want to get laid you're not going to tell a prostitute you're a virgin you're just going to go for it right I, he's not going to bang a prostitute is he Just respect, if it's, respect. If it's a legal place to do it, why not? No, I feel like uh, tell you, I, the guy friend should just, um, like I, I wouldn't tell someone if this I was This is just, one of I, those things, dude. This is one of those things that you build up in your own head so much that you're making it into a bigger deal than like other people care about. Like nobody cares. Literally nobody cares. But like always ask yourself who cares. No one. No one cares. But especially so as a guy, do it. it doesn't really matter because there's not going to be any difference between the first and the second time you do it. Oh, because like with a girl, like with a girl, I think it's a little bit harder. Yeah, but with yeah. the guy, it's literally you put it in. If you last for five seconds, you could say, "Damn, you're so hot." Blam, boom, whatever. Go ahead, go a second round, and that's it. It's gone. <laughs> it's magically gone. There's no, there's no mystical like thing that's going to happen that you're going to be like, "Wow, my aura has changed." Maybe it is, I don't know. But all I'm saying is like, as a guy, it's just the dipstick, dude. <laughs> like, I don't know. I just feel like it's, it's, not, it's not gonna be like a thing where you're gonna be like, oh my word, I feel I so much different. I just think it's, I feel like, dude, as a guy And though, she's not gonna know. As a guy or a woman, getting to the, that age and you haven't had that experience yet, I think you're building it up. You're building it up in your head. It's like now, now I have shame around it in a way. Do you know what I mean? Like, don't have to, first of all, fucking don't. Yeah. And if you if, if you cared that much to save it, to save it. I don't think you. I, I think if it's a girl you don't care about, I don't. You don't have to tell her. It doesn't matter. If you're in a relationship with a girl and you want to, you know, be honest and open, then yeah. Or if you want to, if you want to, but just do, don't feel shame. Yeah, the wanna, right person's not gonna give a shit. Yeah. If They're you want to, if you want to give it to someone special, then just you know wait for that person and you'll find it. But. If you just want to lose it, then go ahead. And I'm like, I'm telling, it's as a guy, you're just gonna be like, oh, cool, it's in, and then you can like, all right, cool, it's let's do it again, and then that's it. There's no like, you know, there's no cleanup really. I mean, there is, but it's not gonna be like, you know, it's not. I feel like for a girl, it's. A I think that I think it's like 
the first time probably is nerve wracking, right, for a guy just because like, you, are you scared to like perform? You probably don't know where to hold, like where to put yeah, it in. Like, yeah, like you know, like, you like okay, it's where it's actually going, right? but it's gonna, it's not that hard. <laughs> How was it on your first time? Did you know where to put it in? <laughs> yeah, I had to take a dump after the first time. No, um. <laughs> No, as, as you, I feel like you never, I mean, it's always going to be hard. Sometimes you just don't even know where to put it in. It's dark in the room. You're like, wait, where's it at? <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, it's how you're going to find it all the time. Or you just go with a girl that's really experienced, and you tell her, I'm a virgin, can you rock my world? And she'll probably be like, yeah, let's go. Yeah. If this question's real, then hold it if you feel like you need to save it for something special. <laughs> if you just want to go have fun and go lose it, don't tell anyone. And that's it. Keep it to yourself. You lost your B card from graduation. And it's not that big of a deal. It's not, it, you're, you're building it up in your the head. Big, the bigger deal is going to come after you lose your virginity. You're like, when am I going to get my next fix, dude, honestly. So that's, that's, that's you're going to open up a floodgate that you're not going to want. <laughs> you're not going to want to experience. We have so much to cut out of this one. All right, guys. So you want to do one more? Mm -mm. No, I think we need to wrap it up. Well, you guys have it, guys. This is part two. I guess, you know, this might not even be a part two. It might just be a, a thing that we do Fridays. It's f fun for us. It's kind of like a, podca a, p a podcast and it's kind of like something that we have fun doing because we like to talk and I mean... Obviously, I mean, we fix guys. poor people. I wonder if anyone even lasts through a, one let, question. Let us know if you last at the end of the video. <laughs> uh, drop an emoji or something. We're do something. We're going to try to you guys to like, listen to us for long periods of time. Um, follow us on Instagram. If you guys want, uh, follow us on Instagram by Carlos Murillo, Twice the Mood. If you guys want to ask us more questions, put put your best questions down below. Also, I was thinking maybe we could react to like a crazy story that you guys have. Maybe we could read it. Like if you guys want to create like a page essay, sometimes a story we could read it out loud. Oh yeah, to it. that'd be kind of funny. Like yeah. of a story that you have that's wild. Um, so yeah, it's all about having fun. We're just trying to enjoy your guys' company and follow following. So um, there you guys have it. Enjoy your weekend. It's, not, it's a weekend for us. Bye-bye. Um, like button, subscribe. Bam, let's go. See you guys very soon. Let's get 50,000 subs. 50K subs. All right, guys. Hasta luego. Hasta luego.